ria le boga lo fono bi le tsa tsila morena gape e ke rata go dimedisha kudu kudu de ifrates the alliance church members shiro kudimo ala shiro fa tsa bana be shu sa le gona e gabotse e well healthy everything is it's, it's fine now today i just want to share with you ela ka go bala last week re boletse re khomile ra bala ka the calamities that the country is going through and not only the country but the world is large or rather at large and today ga ba ka bontsha ga pa pelo ka mogolong gore you know the unemployment will be and it is already in and the government tell that the declining economy government tell that I'm greeting uh, by the world reading agencies and lastly we also touched on the issue of the contemporary disease the so called corona virus that is ravaging the world and south africa so now kerada go shile tsa mantjwa gore nothing is doom there is still life here after today bana bishu ke rata gore nge re lebelele two text in particular two text those would be my key address for the day on our sermon eh uh, these two text that i want to look at ke ditam mantjong la gore we shall have a new season of recovery we shall have a new season of recovery it shall be and nalo wena gore ka dumela ra re jwa lo ra ba positive ra lebella kwa pele ra lebella le godimo ka gopolo ya gore there shall be new season and indeed it will be now two texts that i want us to look at kitwel number 2 or chapter 2 verse 25 and 26 let me read uh, this chapter jewel number 2 verse 25 and 6 26 it says and i will restore to you the years that the locust has eaten the kangaroo worm and the caterpillar and the palm worm worm my great army which i send among you verse 26 and you shall eat in plenty and be satisfied and praise the name of the lord your god that has dealt wonderfully with you and my people shall never be ashamed now mudimuwa le se basa israel fa ore i will restore i will revive i will bring back ke ta bushetsa tshohle bophelo pholo le thabo khutso tshohle ka moka ga tsona ke ta di bushetsa go lena i know what you went through in the yesterday years i went i know what you went through in the previous days in the previous years but i will restore all those things that you lost but maybe before i go far maybe we should also look at the book of first samuel chapter 30 so that i can mix the two now first samuel chapter 30 verse 18 and 19 it will read as follows and david recovered all that the amalek amalekites had carried away and david rescued his two wives and there was nothing lacking to them neither small nor great neither sons nor daughters neither spoil or spoil meaning the the and na anything that they had taken to them david recovered all david recovered all now i want to mix these two uh, passages the jewel and the samuel the first samuel or in mo go jewel modimo go ntja ga o tsebe go re tshaba se se fitile ka ra mathata a boima ka ra mathata a boima and let me let me say something very important there because go na le mo go na le mo modimo bolla mantjo gore go santa modimo le gore o ra gore i am the one who did that and i will look at that later on, on my conclusion i will explain that issue ya gore modimo re i am the one who did that Now I will I will touch that on my conclusion. Now but he is saying to them 
am I will restore everything your joy your everything your happiness you are everything I will restore them for you now more baby more first Samuel we know all of us we know all of us or the Amala guides by the way finya Davida but to but to the chat of it I don't put on my issue or David will be some damn deal from his young age his young age even at this age David was a servant of the Lord. Even when he came to him, but these calamities came upon him. This man of God, this servant of the Lord. Now calamities came upon his life. The Amalekites, ba taba topa, mutua ba topa luru, la ga ba topa chose kama kaya lugo chaga we. Hmm. Ba 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 topa le ba se di ba ga. Ba topa le ba na ba ga. Kurwa topa chose ba mushia ali jualo, ba mushia ali botading, ba mushia. Ale vulnerable is a feeling when no one is ready. Ale got to learn. I'm talking about the man of God here, David. But now, in this chapter 30, verse 18 and 19, we do more here. Or David recovered all, recovered all that the Amalekites carried away. Not only all, he also recovered his wives. And the Bible says there was nothing lacking, neither small, neither great, even the sons and the daughters, everything that was taken away. There is a last last sentence there. He says David recovered all. So, but grace, I want to remind you once again, as I said last week. Only my key word last week was do not fear. So I want to repeat that to say. Whatever that is, that is, that is upon us today. Do not fear. Skabera wifa. God is in charge. God is in charge. Now, and I'm saying we may go going through whatever that we are going through. Maybe we are going through hunger. Maybe we are going through you know unemployment. Maybe we are going through poverty. You are going through whatever that we are going through sickness. You are going through whatever that we are going through. But I want to I want to remind you on something very very important. You shall recover everything lost in your life. It shall be. But what's wrong? It is it is incumbent upon us. To believe one what the Lord says about us, we must believe what the Lord is saying about about us. Believe it, believe it, believe it. You know, you know. I'm I'm so impressed when this young man Joseph. You know, he believed the Lord, but when na gocha rekisho alaga militing and so forth and so on. So when Sawar alusa hope, alusa faith, he kept on believing. He kept on believing. You know, kuro gocha matata matata kamuka bawa wala Josepha. Habzuza aba mu promuda, aba promuda tumela Josepha, aba strengthen tumela Josepha, and that is why Josepha ultimately, ultimately he succeeded in everything that he dream, he dreamed of, everything that he endeavored, and he succeeded because he kept on believing in the mighty God. Now, and I want to call on you to say, please, it shall be on our side. We will. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we will. Does not matter what the devil is doing to us today. As I've, as I've already outlined, what is what we are, we are going through now as a country. Remember what we are going through as a country. It affects us as the church. It affects us as the families. It affects us as the individuals. But all these negative things, they shall, they shall be remembered no more. So uh, we just need to believe. And we march so fast. Some saying this disease will pass, this you know unemployment will pass, this poverty, this uh, raiding agencies, and so on and so forth. They are here with us. They will pass. And we march so fast. Now, um, Manjua manga bolangi David dekapo mala ko bisal number number thirty number thirty verse five. Now, I want then I would want to touch on what I said. I said I will say when I go closer to my conclusion. Now I want to touch that when I said, remember I said uh, it's like the Lord was in charge of what was happening upon His people. Now this is what I want to read, Psalm number thirty, verse five. For His anger endures, but for a moment. In His favor is life. 
weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Now, Christians, I want us to understand because here the key word is anger, which is something that we saw in the book of Joel. Now, I want to I want us to address this anger. What is the anger of the Lord? Because you know, I want to make it very clear to you that God, sickness, poverty, calamities, all these things, they never come from God. They are not God making. Never know the door. Now, but why these calamities? Why these poverty? Why this and uh, uh, all these ugly things? Let me remind you something. When we talk of God's anger, we simply say when things happen to us because God is in charge. When whatever happens to us, to us as people, it's not that God is defeated, but I usually refer to it this way that I quaint myself to say, the Lord has withdrawn. Now, withdrawn meaning, meaning calamities happen on us as a country, as a nation, they happen on us. And not that God is not aware not God, not that God is not on, is not you know angry with us, but I'm talking, I'm using this word withdrawal. And what is the purpose of a withdrawal? Purpose of withdrawal has never been meant to punish any individual, it's never meant to punish, especially in the context of us, in the context of the New Testament, it's never meant to punish, not at all. But remember. This withdrawal helps us to grow from strength to strength. And I will show that later again as we conclude. You know, withdrawal helps us to grow from strength to strength. It teaches us a lot of things in life. So that, that I call it a withdrawal. Now, and here the Lord says, that withdrawal will never be permanent will never be there to destroy us, will never be there to finish us. But that withdrawal, it's always for a moment. Now the Bible here says, for, I add my word, for his withdrawal into us for a moment. But the key here is, in his favor, there is life. Number two, weeping may endure for a night. Weeping will endure for a night, just for a night. But joy will come in the morning. Now, before I get to my conclusion, I want us to make a prayer together. I have prepared the prayer here so that we get into the gist of this, you know, together. Because I'm not sure if you understand everything that I've just been saying. So, I want to make a prayer with you so that we are together, you know. You know, you know, we are together, we pray together. So I deliberately prepared this prayer. And the prayer goes like this, and I want you to follow me there at home, wherever that you are. Follow me in this prayer. Say, Father, I receive forgiveness of sins and the reversal of all satanic judgments in Jesus' name. Father God, no satanic power or spirit will have the last weight over my situation. Father, it will never be over with me until God's perfect will is fulfilled in my life in Jesus' name. Father, I rebuke and I terminate every power and spirit behind the continuing work of losses, dissolution, distraction, captivity, demotion, failure, infirmity, and satanic judgment in my life in Jesus' name. I am free forever in the name of Jesus. Father, I won't, I won't lose any of my reward and harvest again in Jesus' name. Father, nothing, nothing that I will lose. Father God, no enemy shall eat the fruits of my labor in Jesus' name. No enemy shall eat the fruit of my labor in Jesus' name. Father and my God, today I judge by fire 
every power and the spirit of satanic altar, witchcraft activity, curse, covenant speaking against my recovery and harvest in Jesus' name. Father my God, whoever that denies me of my restoration, of my inheritance, today I declare that by the Holy Spirit they shall be uprooted, they shall be uprooted away from my life in Jesus' name. Father and my Father and my God, whoever that denies me of my restoration, of my inheritance, today I declare that by the Holy Spirit they shall be uprooted away from my life in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Now, in my conclusion, this is my conclusion. I'm summing up on what we were talking about. On my conclusion, I want us to look at the book of Job number, number 20, verse 15. That's my conclusion. Job 20, verse 15. This is what the Lord of the, what the word of the Lord says. Here is the man of faith. Listen to what he says. He swallows riches. That's the enemy. He swallows riches. But will vomit them up. And God will expel them from his belly. I repeat. This is what Job is saying. You know, Job is saying these words. Long before he could enjoy his restoration. But listen to what Job is saying. And I want us to speak like Job. Job is saying, yes, the devil has swallowed my riches. He accepted, yes, the devil has Solid marriages. Yes, the coronavirus has come. Yes, poverty has come. Yes, unemployment has come. Yes, sicknesses. Yes, poverty. Yes, they have come. But listen to what Job is saying. When I have lost everything, when I have lost my family, now this is what Job is saying. But the enemy will vomit them up. And God will expel them from his bed. In other words, God, not, not, not by his will, not by his choice, hmm, but God will expel them from his bed. For I know that they are in the bed of the enemy. The enemy has stolen my, my blessings. The enemy has stolen my children. The enemy has stolen my marriage. The enemy has stolen my job. The enemy has stolen my, my, my health. But now, I am saying in faith or by faith, I am saying, God shall expel them from the bay of the enemy and they shall be restored back to me in Jesus' name. So this is what Job is saying. And I am saying today with you, and I want us to believe together, to say, indeed, it shall be. It shall be. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Now, lastly and lastly, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18. That's the last one. Last. 10 verse 18. Now listen to what Paul is saying. Paul is saying, in conclusion, no temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But when you are tempted, he also provides a way out so that you can endure it. Now, Bagresi. Ulo, Uri Lumisha Tawete number one. Yawre. Kare, you mean from temptations. Temptations are part of our lives. So please, don't give up because there is a temptation. Temptation has been there from the beginning, throughout the life of Jesus, throughout our lives. Temptation has been there. Now, even though temptations are there, but there here is a promise. Such temptations are common to mankind. It be your poverty, sickness, whatever, call them all, call them all, call, call them all. They are all common to humankind. 
And, and that's the key. As long as you are a human being, born again as we are. But there are these common things which are common to human beings. So they affect us one way or the other. You know, we, we eat like they eat. We sleep like they sleep. We happen to be in hospital because, I mean, like they go to hospital. We happen to be poor because they are poor and so forth and so on. All those things to us as born again Christians, we look at them, we see them as temptation. But then remember then, this is very important. Now the Bible says, upon all those things, God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond whatever that you can endure or you can bear. So the Lord is good. Even when Corona is here, coronavirus is here, we will still be able to bear. Even if whatever whatever that is here, we are able to bear with that. God is above everything. Now, Maranari Shofaje, Maranari Vuluke, Maranari Reka Uloka, Mudumara Nagestah, Mudumara Naulukiri. May God bless you all, the Ephraites. May his name be glorified. And I want to bless you. Thank you very much. Amen.